Hi, my name is Justin Myers. I'm the garden coordinator for Recipe for Success. Today we're going to talk about pests in the garden, and specifically insect pests in the garden. Now in Texas there's over 30,000 types of insects, and the, ha and the garden is a wonderful habitat for many of those insects, both the beneficial kind like pollinators such as bees and butterflies, but also the type of pests that are going to eat our plants and cause some frustration uh, in, our, in our daily world. Now the conventional agriculture at the moment when a pest arises, there's the belief that you, you buy the, a spray, you spray, the pest goes away, and you're good to go. Now, even with uh, organic sprays, there's that, that mindset as well. Now, today we're going to talk about creating this healthy ecosystem within the garden world where sprays and things like that really aren't necessary and actually do more damage uh, than, than benefit. Now, many people believe that pests and disease issues are a result of uh, improper plants grown incorrectly. So basically plants that have no business growing in this region and then are grown in ways that are not in a productive healthy way. Perhaps you know planting tomatoes in the same exact spot in your garden year after year. So that, that kind of begins with this idea of healthy soil equals healthy plants. If you have a healthy plant they have natural defenses that are going to ward off many pests and diseases on their own. So adding compost, adding other you know, beneficial soil amendments, rotating crops, all this builds the soil ecosystem, keeps that healthy, which then in turn is going to keep a healthy plant, which is going to be able to handle pests and disease a lot better. Secondly is the idea of building out that ecosystem through a diversity of plants. So you have your vegetables, herbs, flowers, and then your perennials. Now all of these together create a habitat for multiple living organisms that not only a space for, for food, but also a space to live and breed, reproduce, and exist in the garden throughout the year. And that is going to keep, there's going to be a natural checks and balances within that ecosystem. So if, if you've created this ecosystem that has natural checks and balances, where you're going to have the pests of the pests, and also you know, diverse habitat for many other organisms that are going to be that are living there, and you're also going to have healthy plants, and a diversity of plants kind of inner space planted around, then the last ticket is really just to be mindful of your garden. To spend time in the garden so you can notice when there are changes to plants or if you notice that you know, this Swiss chard starts to develop some holes, you can investigate and maybe find your cucumber beetle that's eating them. Um, long gaps of space in, in between visits can often lead to quick pest problems where many of these insects, they might either migrate in or they have a really quick uh, life cycle and they reproduce quickly and they can spread and, and take over uh, and destroy a crop somewhat easily. But with that said, inevitably you're going to have a pest problem now and again and you may lose your, Swiss, you may lose your whole Swiss chard crop, which is not the end of the world because hopefully you have other plants, uh, lettuces, kale, broccoli that are growing as well, so if you lose one it's, it's okay. So this idea of creating a healthy ecosystem through a diversity of plants and healthy soil and being mindful of your garden so you can stop pest problems early before they really get established will create long-term sustainability within your garden and minimize pest problems over the years. The quick fixes of sprays, it may remove the cucumber beetle today, but it's going to create a hole in that ecosystem and lead to further problems farther down the road. In addition, those sprays, they don't just target a cucumber beetle, they're going to kill the other beneficial insects as well, which is further going to imbalance uh, our garden ecosystem and cause more problems. So building out this healthy ecosystem through a series of, of you know, mindful long-term steps will help minimize your pest problems over the long term and hopefully create a, a healthier garden both for all the living organisms in the environment and then also for you as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and otherwise enjoy the garden and I'll talk to you soon.